Yo guys, welcome to the Zelda Fiction. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto got chosen by the god and got harem. Huge shout out to the Shinigami's firstborn for this story. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Gureya dropped Naruto onto the ground. Slowly, Naruto began to regain his consciousness. He began to get up. Naruto woke up groggily and looked around his surroundings. Where was he anyway? Before fainting, he was trying to summon a frog, but instead he kept summoning tadpoles. He kept summoning and summoning, and soon he collapsed from chakra exhaustion. Bed up. Naruto jerked around to see his recent mentor Jiraiya. Huh? Where are we? Naruto asked. Looking around, there was what seemed to be a line of bushes. There were a few trees here and there. He took a look at Jiraiya's face. It was one of seriousness. Bed up. There was no humor in his voice so Naruto quickly obeyed, knowing that Jiraiya wasn't a man to cross. He began to speak. The training ends today if you don't want to die then figure it out yourself. What? Naruto was perplexed. He had just been taught the summoning jutsu, which he still needed to perfect. Why was Jiraiya ending the training now? His teacher slowly raised his hand and, using his finger, gave a poke to Naruto's forehead. Then he flew through the line of bushes and saw what was on the other side nothing. It was simply a gorge one of the last place Naruto wanted to fall. Ah. Gureya simply listened, hearing his pupils scream slowly fade away. Now we'll find out shortly whether QB's power that was granted to you is really a blessing or a curse. Jiraiya thought. Hey I. Naruto was still falling. Seeing a rock ledge come into view, he summoned some chakra into his hands. He grabbed it, but to his dismay, he slipped and continued to fall. It's useless Naruto the rocks are too slippery from the waterfalls. In addition of your falling, you're not going to stick with a little bit of chakra Jiraiya thought after seeing Naruto's incorrect methods of saving himself. Naruto you have no choice you have to rely on the QP's chakra. Use the key this time from your end. That bastard I should have never hid behind this stupid mask, if I get out of this I'll take no more from anyone. Naruto thought as he continued hurtling down a waterfall and would soon meet his demise when he reached the bottom of it. I refuse to die. He screamed in his thoughts. All of a sudden, time seemed to stop for him. Everything slowed down, and he felt as if he was being pulled into another world. Unknown location. Naruto appeared in Sea of White. So the pervert tucking killed me how old bastard mumbled Naruto looking around. You aren't dead a feminine voice said, although when I'm done with you dying won't even be possible. He turned around to see a beautiful woman about 5'6", and was wearing a white kimono with golden swirls, and was barefooted. She had an hergless figure. She had a heart-shaped face with ivory-colored skin. Her eyes were golden color, and she had long flowing snow white hair that stopped to the middle of her back. Who are you, and what did you mean by that? Asked Naruto. My name is Kami, and you are my chosen. Said the newly named Kami while Naruto's eyes widen. What exactly does that entail? You are going to be trained by me and a couple of other strong fighters, and if you wish it, you will be my husband she said smiling while Naruto blushed. But why me? He asked quietly after getting his blush under control. Your life wasn't supposed to be how it turned out, I was swamped with work, and when I checked again everything went wrong. She answered sadly, you were supposed to live with the love of your parents, but that didn't happen. This is my way of apologizing for my mistake. There's nothing to apologize for Kami-chan. Listen, I'm going to implant memories of four of your ancestors in your mind, and I want you to go to the lookout that the first Yuzumakis used to train she said as a gold blue, purple, and black with red outline orbs appeared over her hand, and the four orbs flew into Naruto, I'll be waiting Naruto-kun. Real world. Naruto's body continued falling when his eyes snapped open and flashed teal before he on instinct used Kai to stop himself from falling. While my ancestors were badass, the Rakuto Senen, Ichigo Goku and Vegeta their abilities will come in handy, but first I have to get to the lookout Naruto thought flaring his Kai Naruto shot out of the gorge, so fast Jiraiya never even saw him before a punch connected to his face. When Jiraiya looked up holding his broken nose he saw Naruto standing there, but he was different where he was 4'11 he was now 5'3 his hair was longer, his bangs reaching his shoulders and his hair more spiky with two sticking out like fox ears, think Akatsuki Team 7 Naruto pick, and his jumpsuit ripped apart from his sudden growth. You bastard you tried to kill me stay away from me tell the old man I'll be back for the finals. Naruto said glaring before he took off through the sky. Naruto. I really messed up now Sai but how do you fly away like that? Jiraiya said to himself before shunching it away. With Naruto. Naruto was currently flying high above the clouds, enjoying the feeling of freedom he was having when he saw a huge bowl-like palace. Wow it looks amazing, even though I have memories of this place, but seeing it with my own eyes is spectacular. Thought Naruto before he landed on the platform and walks around seeing how dusty the place was. 
this place could use some cleaning Naruto said to himself before he formed a cross hand seal shadow clone jutsu 10 clones appeared get to work on cleaning this place he ordered. While the clones cleaned Naruto went to find some clothes to wear. 15 minutes later Naruto was standing in front of a white door taking a deep breath Naruto walked into the room. The hyperbolic time chamber has an entrance at its center, located in a central building with two side wings with housing, food supplies, bathing quarters. There was nothing that tells if it was light or day everything was just white that made the room look like it went on for miles. Welcome Naruto-kun turning to his right Naruto saw Kami standing there smiling walking over to her Naruto smiled. This place is kinda weird, but if it'll make me stronger then I'm all for it, Naruto said enthusiastically. But because we're going to start now, meet your trainers, Kami said before she snapped her fingers, and a flash appeared, and eight people appeared, I won't explain what they're wearing think canon. From left to right we have the show Daime Hokage Hashirama Senju Nidame Hokage Taburama Senju, the third Raikagei, Izuna Uchiha, Makoto Uchiha, Mito Yuzumaki, and your mother and father Kishina Yuzumaki and Minato Namikaze. Kami introduced while a tear slid down Naruto's face at his parents, taking a step forward Naruto appeared in front of the both and hugged them while crying. Incredible. He used Shunpo on instinct alone, and he isn't disoriented from it at all Kami thought, while everyone watched with warm smiles. How? Naruto asked looking at Kami I mean I know you're Kami, but don't you have rules against this type of thing? Normally yes but you see I have too much work, I can't keep track of everything you see despite popular belief there aren't any other gods or goddess she said shocking Naruto, the ones that are said to exist are actually techniques I have created. You will be the first god in existence Naruto-kun. I have a mission for you though, but I'll tell you about it when everything is said and done. Kami explained cheerfully. Now create as many clones as you can she instructed. Naruto put his hands together and shouted multi-shadow clone jutsu. In a puff of smoke 3000 clones appeared while each of Naruto's teachers got evil smiles. Okay each of you separate into groups of 375. Kami yelled before she turned to the teachers, well clones followed her order, go get a group to Torta I mean train ya train ha. <laughs> I modified the chamber so we'll be in here for 31 years he should be finished by the time the finals take place. Kami explained while Kishina and Minato smiled brightly, knowing they will be with their son for 31 years. The teachers all walked to a group before they went their separate ways and out of sight. Well Kami kept the original. Now Naruto-kun you will be here physically training and getting your new abilities under control. I also want you to create a sword of your own and fuse it with Tensa's and Jetsu. Any questions before we start? She asked rubbing her hands together. Yeah why are there Chiha training me, I don't have the Sharingan. Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Oh right I forgot, the Uzumaki clan were distantly related to the Senju clan by the sage's daughter marrying one of Goku's and Vegeta's descendants, as their bloodlines mixed over the years they became the Uzumaki clan. The Namikaze clan was members of the Senju clan, and the Chiha clans that wanted peace there were also a clan known as the Kurosaki clan, before they were wiped out after a disease killed all spiritually aware individuals, a survivor named Ichigo married into the Namikaze family, that's how you are related to the sage and the ancestors you know about. You are a direct descendant of the Rakuto Senen. The Ichiha are here because they could teach you about the Sharingan, and when you have a full handle on your Sharingan, I'll fuse it with your Rinnegan, Kami explained before she saw the glint in Naruto's eyes, I will also have the eyes self-destruct if you become arrogant she said seriously, while Naruto paled and looked down in shame. Sorry about that Naruto apologize can't be arrogant because of my power increase, ancestor Goku was never arrogant, and he was impeccably strong I'll surpass him, and everyone else I promise Naruto thought determinably, before a burst of power originated from his eyes which he ignored. I'm ready Kami-chan Naruto said showing his newly activated Rinnegan, Kami smiled approvingly. But now I want you to run around this track, but before that she walked up to Naruto and tapped his arms, chest, and legs before Naruto fell to the ground, I just added 10x normal Earth's gravity to your body give me 60 laps. She said while Naruto grumbled about sadistic teachers and trudged his way to the field. With Kishina. Kishina was looking out at the clones as they worked through the sword kata she showed them with their tenses and jetsu while she was conversing with one of the clones. I'm sorry your life was so terrible Naruto-kun, I was really happy when I found out I was pregnant with you, it was probably the happiest moment of my life. Kishina explained while the clone smiled at her and hugged her. You don't have to be sorry, Tsunade chan told me you loved me when we exchange letters secretly every other month, clone Naruto said. I'm glad she's doing her best to stay in your life, even though she doesn't want anything to do with the leaf village. Yeah I don't know why, but every time I think about the pain she's been through my chest tightens, and I just want to get stronger to protect her from all the pain, Naruto said clutching his chest, while Kishina smiled. He really loves her, even if he doesn't know it yet. 
Fakashin a well then before you get started we have to talk about something it's time you had the talk she said smiling while Naruto looked confused. But Naruto. Naruto was currently huffing and puffing with sweat dripping down his form before a memory came to him from a clone who was talking to his mother and a blush covered his face with blood dripping down his nose and he fainted. Ami giggled seeing his reaction he's so innocent, although I can't believe she was that detailed. I guess she will never forgive Minato for his decision with Naruto being a Jinchuriki, I guess I have my first harem sister already thought Kami with a perverted grin. Month later, 31 years in the time chamber. Naruto who was mentally 44 but looked 21 years old standing in front of the chamber door about head to Konoha the last 31 years had been intense after his training Naruto was sent to different dimension to learn new things and test his skills, and it was all worth it. Naruto's clothing had changed he had a black t-shirt that hugged his form, showing his six-pack to everyone. He had red combat pants with black steel cap boots, think Goku's shoes only black on his face was a white fox mask with red lines descending from the eye holes, his eyes were all black with three golden lines moving from the slitted pupil, and had three golden tamo on each line. He was carrying a 5 feet 61 halves inches overall with a black blade that measures 40 long, with a black handle with the crimson kanji for moon, a long 20 chain links on the handle. This was Tensa Masamya Jetsu, he had fused Tensas and Jets but the swipe of his hand the mask glowed black with a red outline and faded away, leaving a 21-year-old looking Naruto, while his eyes turned red and black, before they turned again to their original blue today's the day, the world sees the new Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze Naruto said. If them hell Nerukuna voice said, Naruto turned around to see Kami, Kishina, Mikoto, and Mito standing there smiling. During his training he had grown close to each of them, he first tried to see them as family, but it didn't work, and when Hikami told him she wanted him to have mates to have more goddesses, Naruto went straight to the girls, and marked them Makoto being the Shinigami, Mito being Inari, and Kishina being Yami. I will my himes Naruto said as he kissed each before he shape shifted into his 16-year-old form, now standing 5'8 walked out of the chamber waving. Real world. Hanahagakur. The day of the Chunin exam finals had come for everyone that had wanted to see the competitors fight for the glory of their village. The viewer stands were packed on one side were the judges, on the other side were the shinobi, mainly Chunin and Jonin, in the center there were the villagers and any genin shinobi. At the top was the Kage booth, consisting of Suratobi and the Kazikage. Suratobi couldn't wait for Naruto to arrive, he had heard what happened and gave Jiraiya an earful for his reckless actions. Jiraiya had went to look for Naruto, but he was nowhere around, so they just settled for when he returned to see what's changed. In the arena, standing there was Niji, Gara, Shikamaru, Tamari, Kankuro, Shino, and they were waiting for the Hokage to make his announcement. Up in the stand Sakura, Ino, Kiba, Hinata, Tenten, and Chaoji were waiting for as well. Wonder where Sasuke Kun is. Thought Sakura. Wonder where Naruto is, no one has seen him for the entire month said Ino. Who cares about that stupid baka? He's nothing compared to Sasuke Kun, he's a genius, answered Sakura. How could you say that he's your teammate? Asked Ino, shocked while Sakura stayed silent. That was when Hiruzen walked up and did his speech about how they all managed to make it this far in the exams. After giving his speech, a Jonin named Genma came down to announce the fights. The first match of the Chunin exams will now begin. Will Hyuganiji and Yuzumaki Naruto step forward while the other competitors go the fighter's box to wait until it is your turn, said Genma, as he heard the crowd cheer, and the Jonin wondered if it was for the obvious reason that Naruto wasn't here. Howard. He says he'll make me pay, but in the end he's just a loser. Thought Niji smirking. Since Yuzumaki Naruto is not here, Hyuganiji is the, said Genma, but was silenced by a whistle catching everyone's attention. They turned to see Naruto with a dango stick in his mouth smirking. Sorry I'm late, got hungry on my way here, Naruto said before he walked to stand in front of Niji, while everyone looked shocked that he wasn't wearing any orange. Are you both ready Genma asked seeing them nod. Hajim. Shouted Genma. It doesn't matter how much you changed over the course of this month given to you to prepare Naruto-san. You are a loser and you will work. Niji never got the chance to finish as he was punched in the stomach, forcing him to double over, and a knee was sent crashing into his face, sending him flying back. He struggled to get of the ground he glared at Naruto. This a fight, stop with the monologue already. Naruto said evenly. Niji glared at Naruto and activated his Byakugan, he was going to charge when he realized one important fact he couldn't see Naruto deactivating his Dejutsu Niji screamed. Why can't I see you with my Byakugan? Everyone was shocked to hear that while every Yuga activated their Dejutsu and had the same result as Niji. It's a seal I created Naruto said, while well, everyone who knew of how complex seals are to even learn looked shocked, I originally created this seal to fight Ichihas, they're a bunch of stupid bastards, a good Ichiha is a dead Ichiha Naruto shrugged, while well, no one could believe what they were hearing. But your teammate is Ichiha. 
So, Team 7 more like Team Joke, look at all the members, a pathetic fangirl who can't use that huge forehead of hers to think of a damn thing useful. The gay chiha who only broods and plot revenge all day guys a flight risk, and me the dope, demon, baka, and a handful of other names, and a teacher who plays favorites and only trains the achiha, and preaches about not abandoning comrades tucking hypocrite. Naruto said while well, Sakura was shouting from the stands, but everyone ignored her. What happened to you, you were nothing like this a month ago. Niji asked trying to think of a strategy. Oh, I always been like this you see I've come across a very precious memory of the events of my birth, which lead to the life I have lived, and my mask needed to go. What you see here is the real Naruto. I am Naruto Uzumaki Nami Kazi son of Kashina Uzumaki and Minato Nami Kazi Jinchuriki of the QB no Kitsune, and if you don't like it you can suck. My. Beep. Naruto yelled before he vanished in a burst of speed and kicks Niji in the chin, sending him flying he appeared over Niji and hit him with his fist intertwined, before he shouted Kao Ken, his body got a red hue, and he punched Niji in his spin and appeared on the ground and punched Niji in the guts, forcing Niji to spit up blood unconscious. Winner by knockout Naruto Uzumaki Nami Kazi. Genma yelled while everyone was sitting shocked by Naruto's proclamation and comparing Naruto and Minato together. He knows. But how that secret is known to only three people. Sarutobi thought. He's that bastard son how could I have missed it? Thought Orochimaru in his disguise and silently seething at how he lost his chance to have the ultimate body. Naruto sighed and floated up off the ground, shocking everyone further before he sat on the roof of the fighter's box and unsealed a plate of dango. Can I have some? A voice asked. Sure you can Koko-chan Naruto said smiling. So you remember me? Yeah, you were the first one in the village to ever treat me normal, Naruto said, looking to the figure on his right, I appreciate everything you did for me, Anko-chan Naruto said, looking at Anko seriously. Anytime Foxy Kun Anko said smiling while chewing on her dango while Naruto chuckled before he looked down at the field for the next fight to star. Hage Booth. Hokage Sama, the Achiha has not arrived yet, and the next match he has with Gara no Sabaku is supposed to start now. Should we postpone the match? Said Ajonin. The Ichiha had his chance to compete today, but blew it by not showing up and should not get a free pass because of his clan name. Clients will expect the shinobi they hire to be on time, and if we excuse Sasuke because of his clan, then we are telling them that we don't care about them. We tell them that they should have to wait for an uncertain and unknown amount of time because of spoiled children like him tell Genma that the Ichiha is disqualified, said Sirotobi, as he felt his old spirit come back already knowing the council would blow a gasket and start to yell at him, but Sirotobi didn't care and wasn't going to care what they said. The Jonin nodded to the Hokage and informed Genma to make the announcement that got many people in Kanoha booing the decision. Will Kankuro no Sabaku and Shino Aburami please come down to get ready for the next fight, said Genma, as the crowd was finally coming back to its senses and wanted to see another fight. Proctor, I forfeit. Said Kankuro earning him booze from the crowd and the cold blue eyes that narrowed in on the puppet user. Okay. Kankuro no Sabaku forfeits, so Shino Aburami is the victor of this match. Will Tamari no Sabaku and Shikamaru Nara step forward for their match, said Genma, as he saw Tamari fly down on her fan, and she looked ready to bash her opponent's skull in. Troublesome. Maybe I should forfeit too since I'm fighting a girl again, said the lazy Shikamaru, only to be sent over the edge of the railing by Naruto, who heard him and summoned a chakra chain to wrap around Shikamaru and place him in the arena. Those who saw the chain had memories of a red-haired Kinoichi. Stop being a beep Shikamaru, this is the Chunin exams you're supposed to fight. Naruto called out still sitting with Anko. Am you Naruto, you're so troublesome, said Shikamaru. Same as canon. Winner. Tamari no Sabaku by forfeit. Said Genma, shaking his head. The next match will be Gara no Sabaku fighting Naruto Uzumaki Nami Kazi. Will both fighters please come down for your match, said Genma, as Higara appeared in a swirl of sand, and Naruto gave Anko the rest of the dango and appeared 15 feet away from him. Genma was about to start the match when a wind blew into the stadium to reveal Sasuke Ichiha and his teacher Kakashi Hataki right behind him. I'm sorry. We're not late for Sasuke's match are we? Said Kakashi, as he his one eye form into a U-shape, and many in the stands were sweat dropping at the man. Actually you're very late Kakashi. The Hokage disqualified Sasuke and were now into the semi-finals, said Genma seeing the other Jonin's shocked look and Sasuke seethe in rage from the news. What? Who is Gara fighting? I'll just take that place. Said Sasuke, as he saw Gara standing in front of Naruto. Move Dobe this is my fight Sasuke said standing next to Naruto. Leave Sasuke. This is not your fight, I won't say it again said Naruto calmly turning to the side slightly. You leave loser. I'm in a chair. You're nothing but some pebble on my road. Bam. Sasuke never got the chance to finish as he was punched in the face and barreling into a wall. 
Let's see how he likes it when he's incapable of getting the third Tomo, let alone a man Jekyo Naruto thought as Kakashi appeared in front of him. How dare you attack the last Kakashi and everyone else on the arena floor were sent plummeting into the ground as Naruto's spirit pressure flooded the area. I have very little patience for you hypocrite leave now Naruto said glaring before he lightened upon the pressure he didn't notice Gara use a force leap technique on himself. Kakashi gulped and took Sasuke off the field so the fight could start. Are both fighters ready Hajim? said Genma before getting far away from the two knowing they were about to do serious damage to the other. Before Naruto could move Gara started clutching his head and was grunting in pain before he opened his eyes, and they were now the Shukaku's eyes. You're very strong I want your blood. In a burst of golden brown chakra Shukaku in full form appeared with Gara's body hanging limply from the demon's forehead. Thought Naruto before he vanished from the arena floor and appeared under Shukaku's chin, he launched a punch which connected and snapped Shukaku head back Naruto was about to continue when. Wind release. Air bullet the blast of air hit him sent him crashing into the stands. Yes. I killed him, I am the strongest there is. Ha ha ha. Screamed Shukaku. Everyone continued to look at Shukaku laugh about killing Naruto they were about to charge when. Damn that actually stung a bit a voice said they turned to see Naruto walking out of the hole he made with his shirt destroyed, he came to a stop at the balcony. He want to play with the big boys, huh fine let's see how long he lasts, Naruto thought before he looked around him. I'd advise you all step away from me, Naruto said everyone moved away except for Team 7, believing that Naruto had nothing under his sleeve. Naruto concentrated. And he proceeded to transform into a Super Saiyan, think Goku vs Fat Android. The shockwave sent Team 7 tumbling, while everyone else looked at the new red-haired Naruto. And Shukaku memory of the time he was the Juubi was telling him what the boy he was fighting was. Impossible. Shukaku yelled getting everyone's attention you're a descendant of those two. He yelled in fear. So you know what I am? Asked Naruto smirking. Saiyan. Shouted Shukaku. What's a Saiyan, and why is Shukaku so afraid of it thought everyone. You have two choices Shukaku fight and die or go back into your vessel. Shukaku didn't waste any time as he returned to Gara's body. Winner of the Chunin exam semi-finals. Nehru said Genma, but was interrupted as an explosion occurred from the Kage booth, signaling the invasion has started. Naruto looked up at the purple barrier that sealed off three Kage-level shinobi from everyone else. Naruto was about to make his way to the barrier when his name was called. Naruto. He turned to see the Jonin senseis looking at him. What? I need to help the old man said Naruto. Go help with damage control, have faith in Hokage-sama and Jiraiya-sama said Asuma, while Naruto's eyes widened, then narrowed. Have faith, we're talking about a 69-year-old man who's done nothing but sit in his office, doing paperwork and reading porn for the past 15 years. Naruto said well some of the Jonins look thoughtful Jiraiya of the Sanin may be up there as well, but I can guarantee that it won't be enough, but fine you go help, because if they don't get help up there, we won't have either a Kage or a Toad Sanin Naruto finished as he extended his arm out, and in a swirl of black and red spirit energy, Tensama Samyajetsu appeared, and he vanished in a Sanito. What was that technique I couldn't track his movements thought Kakashi I'll have him teach me and Sasuke that Jutsu before he lifted his Hidite from his eye. What happened to Naruto? Thought the other senseis. What do we do? Asked Kurinai curiously. Naruto is just joking, Hokage-sama will pull out of this alive trust me. Kakashi said with an eye smile before they shunshin it away while Kurinai looked at the barrier. I have a bad feeling about this Kurinai whispered before she joined her comrades. With Naruto. Naruto was currently making his way to the daimyo's booth, killing all in his way. Why hasn't anyone made their way up to the daimyo's room, I mean yeah he has samurais around, but they could at least come to help out Ot Naruto before he rounded the corner and saw the door was destroyed, and the dead bodies of samurais and Samoto Jonins were scattered around. Sniffing around to get a scent. They must already be outside of the village thought Naruto before he vanished in a shunpo. But the fire daimyo. The fire daimyo was being led to some location with at least 10 jonin level shinobi around him, he was hoping some leaf nin will come rescue him, before he was too far from the village he was currently thinking about his surrogate sister's son. They better come help me, and just when I find out that Minato's and Kishina Ni's son has been alive all this time. I'm sure he and Tsunade Dono would want to know that they both own the land Kanoha is built on, thanks to their clan heritage, man, and the money has been piling up too. They're stinking rich even by daimyo standards and I'm sure if Tsunade Dono will just come back to the village, she would be able to pay her debts easily. He thought unconcerned that he might die today. The walk was done in silence when all of a sudden a black and red blur appeared and took the fire daimyo from his captors, leaving an afterimage behind. Naruto appeared with the daimyo behind a tree. Stay here daimyo-sama, I'll deal with the trash. Naruto said before he vanished in a burst of speed, leaving two shadow clones with the daimyo. 
with Odo Shinobi. They were looking around for the daimyo who just phased out of existence a second ago. The Ashi Taicho or Ochimaru Sama will be very upset if we don't get to the rendezvous point without the daimyo. Said a shinobi, when the caption didn't respond he placed his hand on his shoulder, and the head fell off shocking him completely he turned to his comrades, only to find them dead as well guys. He looked around to see the enemy but couldn't find him or her. He heard breathing behind him, turning around he came face to face with a white fox mask with red lines descending from the eye holes, the eyes were all black with golden fox-like slits for pupils he tried to scream, when the figure's hand shot out and grabbed him by the lower part of his face, and the hand started lighting up, and a flash of black was all he knew. The last thing he heard was a demonic voice saying Ciro. But the swipe of a hand the mask turned into black with a red outline and dispersed in the air, allowing the fire daimyo who was watching with the clones to see Naruto looking into the sky. Makoto-chan will be summoned to this plane, which means Hiruzen will have to use the Shaiki Fuin. if Ito Tensei was used if the chakra signatures I'm sensing are correct, Naruto thought before he turned to the fire daimyo. Daimyo-sama, those clones will protect you until this invasion is done with, they will take you somewhere safe said Naruto while the daimyo nodded still in shock of the technique he had just witnessed, while Naruto put on his hollow mask and vanished. Earlier? Up in the Kage's box, Suritobi met the eyes of the Kazikage, in a split instant the Wind Shadow's guards acted by igniting a smoke grenade, while tossing two kunai into the flak vest of the Hokage's jonin guard, as the man slumped against the wall he pleaded that his leader get away while he could. Reacting before Hiruzen could, the Kazikage dashed over and looped an arm around Saritoba's neck, before jumping straight up to the roof of the structure. Saritobi sensei Jiraiya asked with a shocked expression as he shunched it to the box and jumped to the roof with some Anbu operatives. I'm afraid to say that this is not the Kazikage, but in fact my ex-student your ex-teammate. Isn't that right Orochimaru? Saritobi said with calm anger as he glanced at his once favorite pupil, who was in the process of pulling away his mask. By Suratobi sensei I'm hurt that you would refer to me in such a way. Don't I still mean something to you? Now. Orochimaru said with that infuriating smile of his as he ordered his people to do something further. Hearing the order and getting ready to fend off whatever the Hibi Sanin had prepared, the only warning Jiraiya and the Anbu got was the thud of a kunai hitting the ground. Jiraiya reacted the quickest and jumped when his instincts told him to, luckily he listened as the kunai exploded from nowhere, and all the Anbu still standing there burst into flames. You're not getting out of here alive Hebe team. Said Jiraiya while glaring at Orochimaru. Whatever you say dope. Now then shall we begin with the festivities my dear old teammate and ex-sensei. Do it. Orochimaru asked mockingly before he ordered his people to do something else. From the two bodies of the former guard for the fake Kazikage burst four people who each took a corner of the roof, each of them wore attire marking them as Nin from Odo, but that was where the similarities ended. All right, time to do some damage. I'm sicken of the west gate. A voice said belonging to a boy with bluish-gray hair with long bangs that covered one eye. He wore turquoise lipstick and brown eyeliner, which made his appearance more feminine. Um, this shall be interesting. I am Kitamaru of the East Gate A boy with six arms and an Odo Hidite said with a smirk. The day's the end for you Kanoha Shitstons. I am Tayuya of the North Gate, the voice of the only female of the group rang out, it belonged to a tomboyish redhead that wore a hat made entirely of bandages. Tayuya, women shouldn't swear like that. I am Jirobo of the South Gate a large kid with an reddish-orange mohawk and a sleeveless gray shirt. Enough chatter, perform the jutsu. Orochimaru said with a hint of annoyance in his voice. Everyone on the roof could only watch as the four teens each made the hand sign for Tiger and then held it out in front of them while building chakra. Four violet flames battling campment. The four teens shouted. The purple-colored barrier sprang up on the roof, just as another squad of Anbu arrived to aid their Hokage, one of the black-cloaked ones jumped towards the barrier, thinking nothing of what effects might be on it. Instantly the moment the masked shinobi touched it, he burst into flames, prompting the other three to stand down for the moment as they assessed the situation. Hold it, it looks like anything we try against that could only lead in our demise. For now we have to trust our leader and Jureya-sama to hold their own until they can manage to take down the barrier from the inside. The Anbu captain explained from just a glance at what the seal just did to one of his subordinates. Ah good luck with it you shitheads. The old man and the perv both have a better chance of just rolling over and croaking right now. Tayuya said with a taunting smile to the Anbu as she and the rest of the Sound Four erected a second barrier inside the first to protect them from harm. Inside the barrier, Orochimaru and Suratobi leaped away from each other and just stared off while they removed the robes they were wearing. They each wore their signature look, for Orochimaru it was a look that was almost identical to his shinobi that were holding the barrier. 
Saratobi on the other hand was wearing a black jumpsuit with grey shoulder armor, a gauntlet on his right arm, a leaf forehead protector bandana with long straps and a ninja helmet which he wears under it, and the kanji for Sandei Ami was inscribed on the back of this outfit, while Jiraiya cracked his knuckles. So Saratobi sensei Jiraiya, it seems that we can start getting reacquainted inside this barrier. This way you both can watch your precious village crumble to ash and be unable to stop it at all. Orochimaru said with a devious smile. This is bad I can't take Jiraiya and Saratobi sensei together he thought before an idea came to his head. Spare us your theatrics Orochimaru, your ambition will fail, and Konoha will stand tall against your threat. Hiruzen said as he took a ready stance. Poor fools, you both are all by yourselves in here with a god, what could you possibly hope to accomplish? Orochimaru asked as he crossed his arms in a relaxed pose, only to cry out in pain a moment later from a kunai cutting his cheek before looking to Jiraiya, who was beside Siratobi who was smirking with his arm outstretched, showing he three the kunai. If you're bleeding, then you're no god, just a gay pedophile with a god complex, Jiraiya said smirking before he got into a ready stance of his own. I appreciate the help Jiraiya, but we both know I won't survive this encounter with Orochimaru, we're going to do what we should have done all those years ago. Saratobi said as with a heavy heart he resigned himself to truly fighting his favorite student. I know old man, but I'll try to keep you alive through this fight. Jiraiya said determinably while Saratobi grew a soft smile. I originally didn't plan you being here Jiraiya, but I'm glad you are it'll just make my victory all the sweeter when I watch the light leave both your bodies. Orochimaru said as he stared down both his opponents with a confident smirk. To everyone in the booth watching, they could feel the tremendous amount of charka being built up by all three fighters as they waited for the other to make a move. The Anbu operatives were kneeling in awe at the raw power of a truly Kage-level battle that was about to begin, wasting no time student and Sensei leaped at each other, with Jiraiya prepping a justu of his own to use. Orochimaru and Saratobi both flew through hand signs at a rapid pace. Shuriken Shadow Clone Technique Saratobi threw a shuriken that multiplied until an entire wall of the projectiles were flying at Orochimaru. Summoning. Impure World Resurrection Orochimaru slammed his hands onto the roof, and his jutsu took hold immediately, as a large wooden coffin started to arise. As the second coffin was arising Sarutaba's shuriken slammed into both with great force, but, it looked as if his attack did nothing to halt the jutsu. Hiraya, quickly we must stop the third coffin from rising. Saratobi said as he performed the counter signs to the jutsu and flared his chakra. Jiraiya blurred through hand signs as he jumped next to Suratobi and barely managing to stop the third coffin with a earth jutsu, however, before he could make another move Orochimaru is already on the move as he leaped towards them with his hands already in the seal for his jutsu. Shadow snake hand as the snakes emerged from his sleeves, Orochimaru didn't care if his opponents dodge or block the attack. The real battle was just getting started. It would seem we could not stop the first two coffins from arising. Saratobi said with regret and disappointment in his voice, as the coffin lid started to open. Yes but who did he summon? Jiraiya asked as he inwardly cursed himself. I believe you will truly find my present to your liking sensei, and an honor for you as well dope. Orochimaru said with a twisted grin as the lids crumbled to the ground, revealing two people easily recognizable to Saratobi. Before him stood two men he respected and admired above all others in his life save a few, the Shodai Mei Hokage Hashirama Senju, still adorned with his red samurai armor and headband, and the Nidame Hokage and brother to the Shodai Mei Tabarama Senju, also wearing his blue armor and a head protector. Hiruzen is that you? You've gotten quite old. Hashirama said as they both walked out of the coffins with shaky steps. Well brother, Naruto-chan did call him old man Tabarama said, while well, Jiraiya Saratobi's and Orochimaru's eyes widen at the name. You know Naruto-kun? Saratobi asked shocked but how is that possible? Sorry, that's on a need-to-know basis. Hashirama said. Just what the hell did Naruto do during the break? Jiraiya thought to himself. Well let's resume this battle and get your deaths underway. Orochimaru said stepping forward with two kunais in his hand with red seal tags on the end, with calm assurance he placed a seal kunai in each summon past Hokage's heads, before stepping back to watch as they came fully to life. Inwardly still thinking about how the show and Nidame Hokages knew the QP brat. In a matter of seconds, both men looked as young as the day they each passed from the mortal plane, while everyone else watched on as tears appeared in Hirzen's eyes. Soon enough they were both fit for combat and got right into it by slowly walking forward, without much warning Hashirama ran straight forward, while Tabarama hopped up on the second roof as he ran at the same pace. Saratobi dodged a few kunai that were thrown ahead of Hashirama, who demonstrated his mastery of tojutsu by attacking with powerful kicks which Saratobi deflected before knocking his predecessor away, just as Orochimaru appeared with Kusanagi already in mid-swing. 
using his natural agility gained from training with a monkey contract, Saratobi weaved around each swing before catching Orochimaru on a backswing and breaking his arm at the joint, before throwing the snake-themed man away, as Tabarama flipped over him and lunged forward from the moment he landed. Gureya intercepted the Nidame, and the two white-haired shinobi engaged in a fierce dejutsu exchange, Tabarama caught a fast left from Jureya before throwing a punch of his own that he ducked under and struck him with an chakra-powered uppercut to the chin, followed by a Rasengan to the chest blowing the man away. Tabarama recovered pretty quickly, and the wound healed before he rushed Jureya and sent a punch to Jureya's face which he parried, then he clutched his arm, stepped inside his guard and kicked Tabarama in the gut hard and sent him flying. Abarama landed near his brother and Orochimaru as Saratobi ran through hand signs. Higher style. Dragon flame bullet Saratobi breathed in deeply and filled his lungs with Sharka mixed air and expelled a large stream of fire at his three opponents, pushing a little more chakra into the jutsu to superheat his attack which barreled at the two Senju brothers and Snake Sanon. Just as it looked as if the technique would finish them off, Tabarama went through hand signs of his own. Water release. Water encampment while spitting out a large amount of water, Tabarama quickly formed the water into a wall of as the fire jutsu collided with its surface only to extinguished due to elemental advantage going to water. Then he performed more seals just as his first jutsu died down. Water release. Water shockwave. This jutsu caused a pillar to water to just appear around them before exploding and rushing forward at Siratobi who saw this and ran through another set of seals of his own. Earth release. Earth while gathering chakra in his body again, Hiruzen spit out a stream of mud just in front of him that instantly sprang up and became a hardened wall of earth. The water jutsu slammed into the wall and was directed to either side. Gureya wasted no time running up the earthen wall to the top, where he flew through a set of seals, while her chakra surged for the jutsu. Fire release. Flame dragon technique manipulating his chakra Jureya took a deep breath and unleashed a large fire dragon as it flew up before barreling down towards the three fighters. The fire dragon opened its moride as it was on top of the two kages, of course they dodged the attack, but Jureya just decided to send the jutsu Orochimaru's way, as Saratobi ran through hand signs for earth release. Earth flow river which caused the ground beneath his student's feet to become a river of mud that threw him off balance as the fire dragon clamped its maw around him and drove towards the well of the barrier. As the two kages were regrouping from Jureya's attack, Hiruzen performed another round of hand signs as he ran up his earth well. When he reached the top, Hiruzen stomped top of the wall as he held the hand sign for dragon. Earth release. Earth dragon from the side of the earth wall, sprouted a massive earth dragon that opened its mouth wide and began to fire highly concentrated globs of mud. Gureya seeing this decided to use another fire jutsu he spat out a orb of fire with great accuracy to increase the potency of Siratobi's attack. The now flame-covered earth dragon hit both Kage's head on as it caused Hashirama to be slammed into the barrier where he burned alive, Tabarama to lose his right arm and left leg. I see you still have some fight in you sensei. Said Jureya not dropping his gourd while scanning their teamwork against three opponents completely their equals. Yeah, although age is catching up to me Saratobi groaned in old age as he quickly popped a soldier pill to regain some of his lost chakra. They both watched as the dead Kages reformed right before their eyes, and Orochimaru slowly rise from the ground with a look of fury on his face. Enough playing around. Kill them now. Orochimaru snarled as Tabarama raced forward while Hiroshima performed hand signs. Time to get back into the battle again. Saratobi said as he went through hand signs of his own, while Jureya ran forward to meet Tabarama. To those watching outside the barrier, both the Anbu squad and the Jonin senseis were truly impressed with such a battle they were witnessing. As they witnessed the power Saratobi Hiruzen still held at his fingertips despite his age as he matched his old senseis, pound for pound alongside Jureya, who was truly showing why he was a Sanin. The battle between five shinobi had reached an agitated state as Hashirama used his wood release. Secret Technique. Nativity of a world of trees to alter the battle site by causing a rapid growth of large tree roots around Saratobi's earth wall. While he laid pinned by the trees, Saratobi managed to complete his jutsu to summon Monkey King Enma to his side. After exchanging a few blows with the two summoned fighters, he transformed into the legendary adamantine staff and freed Siratobi before he went on the offensive against Orochimaru, who spit up the Kusanagi again. The entire time he faced off with Orochimaru and Hashirama on occasion, Siratobi was thankful that Jureya was inside that barrier at his aid, as he kept Hashirama and Tabarama at bay enough. The battle seemed to be even enough until Tabarama cast the game Jutsu Bringer of Darkness technique over both Siratobi and Jureya's sight. They managed to dispel the jutsu by hitting Tabarama, but the damage had been done, both of them received numerous blows which took their toll as their enemies never tired. Jureya and Saratobi were on their last legs, having been battling for an hour and a half, which in the shinobi world was a feat in itself. 
Saratobi was midway through the seal sequence for the Shaiki Fuin, when the sound of thunder caught everyone's attention, even those fighting all over the village, as the sky began to darken with black storm clouds and red lightning. Those of the leaf got ready to fight in case this was another player in Orochimaru's forces, while Orochimaru himself was wondering what Kanoha had hidden to oppose him. Those on the Kage booth were especially curious as a black and red wolf made of energy struck the barrier's ceiling and broke through. When it touched the ground, the wolf kicked up dust from its power. Everyone inside that barrier were on edge none more so than Orochimaru, he was questioning what could have the ability to pierce his barrier when even Kanoha's finest themselves couldn't even do so. The answer came in the form of Naruto who stood tall while taking in the area around, as his mask caused a shiver to run down everyone's spine, while Tensuma Samyajetsu on his side pulsed. He focused on the show and nidame Hokages who he agreed to see as older brothers during his time training dam, can't believe he would summon those two Naruto thought, before his mask faded away. While this was going on Siratobi took that as his chance to attack and used shadow clones to create two clones, then he ran through a set of seals and clapped his hands at the end. Shaiki Fuin he whispered. Behind the original Siratobi a large pale white figure appeared. Its face was purple as well as demonic looking in appearance, it had long spiky black hair and wore a robe of the same color that hid everything from view except its hands and head. In its largely fanged mouth sat a knife and along its left arm sat prayer beads, this was a being of great power beyond mortal comprehension, for this was Makoto's Shinigami form. As the Shinigami settled behind Siratobi, her new aura washed over the entire Kage booth, causing everyone there to feel its effects. Or in Naruto's case actually smile. My Naruto-kun, I'm impressed you managed to get past my seal barrier. Tell me did you enjoy the gift I gave you back in the forest of death? Orochimaru said greeting Naruto as he finally broke the silence after watch his sensei perform a jutsu but wasn't worried. I've long since removed your little gift and now I've come for your head pedophile. Dot Naruto said as he twirled his sword in his hand. Really? And just how do you think you will go about doing that? Orochimaru asked as he crossed his arms. Before Naruto could answer, Saratobi burst into action as he raced towards his two mentors and Orochimaru himself. His clones managed to catch his senseis by surprise, while the original Saratobi launched himself at his ex-student. Orochimaru tried to use the Kusanagi to defend himself, but Saratobi would have none of that as he knocked the blade from the Sanin's grasp before grabbing Orochimaru by the shoulders. In that instant the Shinigami plunged her hand through Saratobi and entered Orochimaru and took hold of his soul, this move revealed the entity to the snake Sanin who was instantly surprised. Stay where you are, you'd only get in the way with that injury. Naruto told Jiraiya before he could attempt getting up and jump to Saratobi's aid. Over with Saratobi, his clones managed to seal Hashirama and Tabarama into themselves and Makoto's belly. All that was left was Orochimaru himself as he was being held in place while his soul was being pulled out his stomach. Our time in this world has reached its end, my wayward student. Saratobi said with a strain of concentration in his voice. Sorry sensei but I have plans that don't involve death at the moment. You can take the trip yourself. Orochimaru replied with a smirk as he used his fingers to coax the Kusanagi from its place behind Saratobi. The blade rattled for the first few tries until it lifted off the ground and raced toward Saratobi's unguarded back, the Kusanagi would have struck true if it wasn't for Naruto who caught it by the hilt. Soon after the Kusanagi began to shake before it dispersed in a cloud of smoke. It seems that the Kusanagi doesn't appreciate you touching it Naruto-kun, then again it is expected that only I could handle such a sword. Orochimaru said speaking as if he wasn't on the verge of having his soul ripped from his body. Naruto just ignored him and turned his attention to Hiruzen. How much chakra do you have left old man? Naruto said with an even tone. Even with you blocking the Kusanagi, I still don't have enough strength to fully seal my wayward student with me in the Shinigami's belly. I'm sorry I won't be around to watch you grow strong my boy. Saratobi admitted with a strained voice as the Jutsu was sapping all his strength, however he still managed to smile. Sai you'll be with me in spirit, Naruto said as a tear streamed down his face as he placed a hand on Saratobi's shoulder and gave him some chakra. Always. Naruto I just wanted to say that I'm sorry about the life you've lived. Hiruzen said while the spectators listened and you finally took down your mask and currently in the process of showing the world what you are made of. Minato and Kashina will be proud of you, I know I am. Saratobi stated with a smile before turning back to his student, this will be the end of your ambition Orochimaru, I will take away what you prided in the most your ability to harness ninjutsu. For your arms have now become forfeit. Shaiki Fuin, Fuin. Saratobi yelled as he pulled Orochimaru's sole arms free and held them taut as Makoto grasped her knife in hand and severed the arms, which caused an echo of pain in the air. The soul zoomed into Saratobi with a finality as the seal for the Shaiki Fuin appeared on his stomach, where the cut soul entered. 
Orochimaru looked down in pain as his arms fell to his sides and slowly became lifeless and numb due to the jutsu. My arms old man, what have you done? Orochimaru yelled all composure forgotten in the face of losing the use of his arms, only to jump back due to experience, rather than line of sight, as he dodged the blade of Tensa Masamujutsu, as it was wielded by Naruto, who tried to end the life of the Sanin right then. Drop the barrier, we are pulling out this invasion has failed. Orochimaru groaned in pain after speaking above his subordinates as they cried out for him. Dropping the barrier, the Sound Four rushed to their master's side. Tayuya and Jirobo each took an arm, then started jumping across the roof, while Seiken and Kitamaru covered their escape. The Anbu that were waiting for a chance to get into the action, chased after the group of five with full intent on stopping them, Kitamaru turned in mid-air and fired a net made of spider webbing at them, ensnaring them instantly. Tsuritobi watched his once beloved student flee the walls of Konoha, as he fell to his knees he closed his eyes since Makoto pulled his soul out completing the ceiling. As more Anbu and some Jonin started to show up at the Kage booth to assist they found Naruto and Jiraiya looking down at Hiraz and Suratobi's dead body. The Jonin senseis looked at Kakashi with narrowed eyes as they saw what Naruto predicted had come to pass. Naruto sighed and turned around to go retrieve the fire daimyo. Naruto he turned to see Jiraiya looking at him seriously where have you been for the past month? Plant secret. Naruto said before he vanished in a Sanito leaving behind an angry Sanin and Kapi Nin while the others looked confused. A week later. It's been a week since the invasion and two days since Hiruzen's funeral. Naruto and Ko. Were in the council towers the only damage done to the building was the entire roof was missing, showing the clear blue sky. Currently we find Naruto, the other rookies, and the Jonin sensei standing in front of the council, Fire Daimyo and Jiraiya, as they got prepared to see who was promoted. Shikamaru Nara, you've been promoted because you showed great strategy in your match, you are hereby granted the rank of Chunin. The Fire Daimyo said while well, Shikamaru muttered. Troublesome he accepted the Chunin flak jacket while his team and father smiled. Naruto looked around the room and saw the Yuzumaki swirl on various pieces of clothing and scowled slightly unnoticed by everyone. Naruto Yuzumaki Nami Kazi, you showed that you can keep a clear head in a situation you've never been in. You came to resus me alone and had your clones protect me while you went back to help deafen the village. I hereby grant you the rank of special Joan in the daimyo said, while everyone was shocked and Sasuke glared in rage. Before the daimyo could continue the civilian council shouted in protest. Silence. The daimyo shouted Naruto the next person that speaks out of turn kill them. The daimyo said while well, Naruto smirked sadistically, now then as you are the last member of your clans you are to have multiple wives and you will have a seat on the shinobi council. The daimyo explained while Naruto nodded. Daimyo sama will it be too much to ask that the Uzumaki swirl be removed from the wardrobe? Naruto asked while everyone looked at him shocked. Sure the daimyo said smirking. Tsukui Haruno mother of Sakura Haruno couldn't take it anymore and shrieked you can't do. She didn't get the time to finish as the daimyo nodded to Naruto who smirked and pointed at Tsukui and she was pushed back before she floated in the air, struggling to reach the ground as Naruto lifted his hand and she flew into the sky. Naruto. Stop it she's my mother Sakura pleaded while everyone looked on intrigued with what would happen. Your mother has just disobeyed the fire daimyo, as a resident of the fire country, it is my duty to complete his orders to the best of my abilities. Naruto said coldly before he turned to Sakura's mother who was screaming everyone watched as he clenched his fist and Sakura Haruno exploded in front of their eyes. Nuo. Sakura screamed crying while the rookies looked shocked that Naruto would do something like that. Now then, Naruto as per agreement with your father, you will be giving traveling rights as you have betrothals in other villages in hopes of them becoming future allies. The daimyo said. This time the entire civilian council exploded again. Before something the elders, clan heads, Jiraiya, Daimyo, and Jonin senseis never thought they'll see again happened. Naruto took out a three-pronged kunai and threw it as they multiplied and vanished in a black flash he appeared back in the same spot before the civilian counselor's heads fell to the floor. There was only silence in the room before the rookies even Sasuke puked everywhere. Horatio and Jiraiya whispered before the clan heads all thought back to what Naruto said before he ended his first match. Flash. What happened to you, you were nothing like this a month ago. Niji asked trying to think of a strategy. Oh, I always been like this you see I've come across a very precious memory of the events of my birth, which lead to the life I have lived, and my mask needed to go. What you see here is the real Naruto. I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze son of Kashina Uzumaki and Minato Namikaze Jinchiriki of the QB no Kitsune, and if you don't like it you can suck. My. Beep. Naruto yelled before he vanished in a burst of speed. Flash end. The clan heads had their own thoughts. Troublesome blondes thought Shikaku before he placed his head down. Glad I've never treated him wrong. Thought Joza before he unsealed a bag of chips. 
I hope Ino will stop treating him badly or she would be in danger. Thought Inoichi as he looked to his daughter. So Hinata finally did something right for a change. Thought Hisashi already scheming up ways to get Naruto to a Hyuga and to Naruto's clan. My bugs are afraid of him it would be logical to not anger him, thought Shibi as his insects buzzed. He's the ultimate alpha male, I wonder if he's interested in older women. Thought Tsum shivering and looking at Naruto in lust which he noticed and smirked slightly. Now Naruto, I want you and Jiraiya sent to go bring Tsunade send you here to be the Gondai Mei Hokage. Also when you return me, you and Tsunade are going to have a talk. The fire daimyo said smirking. Naruto and Jiraiya were walking down a road side by side, well in the middle of a heated conversation. They had just left the village behind for the surrounding embrace of nature as they began to search for Tsunade. I told you that I was sorry, what more do you want? Jiraiya asked. If you want my trust you're going to have to work for it, Jiraiya San Naruto said while he walked along. Alright. From what I can tell you're very strong even if I don't know how you got this strong in a month. Anyway there is a group called Akatsuki that plan to capture all the Jinchuriki for their biju, for what purpose I have no idea so be on the lookout. Said Jiraiya seriously. Some time later Naruto was walking up the main street of a town with Jiraiya. We should begin the search for Tsunade. Naruto advised as he continued up the road. I agree we should find a hotel for the time being, Jiraiya said before he was cut off by a feminine voice. Excuse me, but I was wondering if either of you could help me. Both Jiraiya and Naruto turned to the left to see a very beautiful woman in a short one-piece dress that pushed up her ample chest. She had long flowing black hair that dressed just above her, but and wore a pair of high heel sandals with some makeup to accentuate her features. All this was off course too much for Jiraiya as he rushed to the unknown woman's side. Uh Naruto why don't you go find us a hotel to stay in while I help this young woman with her problem. Jiraiya said with a smile as the woman laced her arms around Jiraiya's right bicep. Naruto said nothing as shook his head and took Jiraiya's travel pack from him and watched as Jiraiya went of with the woman all the while giggling lecherously, when the perverted hermit was out of sight, Naruto knew that he was being watched but didn't act on it just yet as he decided to have his pursuers reveal themselves in time. So he just set out to find a hotel to stay in for the time being. The moment Naruto disappeared from general view, two mysterious figures appeared onto of a nearby building. You sure he's here somewhere? A large gruff voice asked with a hint of glee in it. Yes I'm sure besides our informant and Kano has said as much that they headed in this direction, so this is our best bet for the moment. Let's go. A softer voice answered while they both scanned the streets below before disappearing via shunshin. Unknown location. Orochimaru was sitting alone in a dark room with two candles for illumination, as he focused on keeping himself from crying out in pain again, as the effects of Sirotobi's jutsu was taking its toll on his now useless arms once more. The pain has become unbearable, damn you to hell Sirotobi sensei Damn you and that jutsu of yours. And Naruto-kun you shall pay for stopping my plan to crush the leaf and then rebuild it in my image. Orochimaru was cut off from further thoughts by Kabuto entering the room with a small smile on his face. Orochimaru-sama how are you feeling this day? Kabuto asked but only received a harsh glare for his efforts. Don't patronize me Kabuto, the pain in my arms has returned with double the intensity. Orochimaru all but growled at his second in command while he once again tried to move his lifeless fingers again. That's because you've stopped taking the medicine I've been preparing for you. Kabuto pointed out as he poured a fresh cup of the mixture that would bring temporary relief before standing at his master's side. The problem isn't the medicine, but the type of medicine I've been getting Orochimaru reply simply as a sinister smile, slowly began to form on his face. What do you mean Orochimaru-sama? Kabuto asked as he helped his master take the medicine which caused the pedophile to grimace at its taste before continuing, although he kept the veiled anger out of his voice, at basically being told that his healing methods weren't good enough. What I mean is that I know of a way to get my arms working again, we seek out my old teammate Tsunade Senju. She's known as the mistress of modern medicine, as we know it in the shinobi world today, if anyone can fix my arms it's her. Kabuto leave me and uses our contacts to locate Tsunade's whereabouts. Orochimaru said as he drank a glass of water. As you request Orochimaru-sama. Kabuto said with a bow before he walked out the room to perform his given task. Soon I shall have my arms back and will crush the leaf for all time. Kukuki kuku. Orochimaru thought as a snake slithered into his lap while he licked his lips in anticipation of what was to come soon enough. With Naruto. It's been an hour since Naruto and Jiraiya separated, and Naruto decided to look for the perv the moment Naruto entered the club the women saw him they swooned and dumped the sand in right there and then. They all hugged Naruto who blushed as they started kissing him. It was a club where the women didn't kiss unless they wanted to. Jiraiya always went to these clubs and they never kissed and humped him. 
Naruto-kun here is our number you can call us anytime, and we mean anytime said the girls Naruto just smiled a bit and accepted the numbers, and that was it for the Sanin who fumed. Bye thank you ladies. Naruto said smiling. Naruto. Jiraiya growled as he left an hour later Naruto found him. As they walked Naruto accidentally bumped into someone who almost stumbled and fell, but Naruto grabbed her. Sorry Naruto said to a raven-haired beautiful woman making Jiraiya go in pervert mode. Hot day alert. Jiraiya drooled. The woman looked up at Naruto and blushed and no, it's alright Naruto smiled something's not right about this girl. The woman just blushed dreamily which caused Jiraiya scowl damn that brat. The Sanin could not let Naruto take the spotlight again. Before Naruto said anything the Sanin got some money out of his wallet and pushed it on Naruto's chest. Naruto here is the money go have fun. That's the second woman he's ditched me for idiot. Naruto thought as he headed back to the hotel. But Naruto. Naruto sighed as he sat down on his bed. Jiraiya looked like he wasn't even trying to find his Tsu-chan. I should have went by myself laying down on a bed Naruto sighed. Naruto suddenly smiled. Saratobi Hiruzen died and he wasn't there for his funeral in fact he didn't care all that much with all the lies and secrets he just had to keep up appearances. Naruto grew bored as he started thinking of a trip he took during his training. Flashback. In the center of a large seal stood an old white-haired man, he wore a white coat with violet swirl on the back, accompanied by nine tomos. Surrounding him was a much younger version of the Bijus. I will not live long anymore Shukaku, Matatabi, Isobu, Son Goku, Kakuo, Seiken, Chamei, Jayuki, Kurama, even if you are separated now you will always be together, and the day you will return to be one will he stopped and looked at his creations. Every one of you has a name a different form from before differently from when you were all sealed within me, follow your rightful path search for what true strength is, until that day he continued, Kurama and few other began to tear up. Before a flash of light in the sky caught their attention. When the light died down something fell to the ground kicking up dust. When the dust faded standing there was Naruto who was shaking the his head mumbling. Am Kami she did that on purpose. He grumbled as he looked up he saw the Biju and the Rakuto Senen looking at him. Hey old man Naruto waved while the Biju crouched down to protect their father in case something happens. Hello um who are you? The Rakuto Senen asked curiously. Well I'm your descendant Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto introduced himself as his eyes bleed into his Rinnegan while everyone's eyes widen. How is that possible? He asked. Well you might want to get comfortable long story. Naruto said as he sat down and proceeded to tell the Rakuto Senen and the Biju what happens after he dies. The Rakuto Senen grits his teeth as he hears what becomes of the world and his eldest son's actions, while the Biju glare at the ground hearing how they got sealed into humans to use as weapons. Why are you here then? Rakuto asked suddenly. I'm here for them. Naruto said seriously pointing at the Biju while their eyes widen. What you just said. I know but if I take them with me then they won't be able to be used as weapons. I'll take them back to my dimension as summoning animals. Naruto explained as their eyes sparkled in realization, but your forms will change, except for Kurama's this is up to you guys, Naruto said as a huge scroll appeared in front of him, and he unraveled it showing nine squares on it. Place your hands on the square if you accept. The Biju turned to Rakuto who looked at them and smiled. This is your decision, choose wisely I doubt you'll get another chance like this again. Rakuto advised as the Biju looked at each other and nodded their heads and walked up to the scroll. I Shukaku accept to be a member of the summoning contract. Shukaku said as he placed his paw on the first square, and they watched as his form turned into that of a coyote. I Matatabi, accept to be a member of the summoning contract. Matatabi said as she placed her paw on the second square, and they watched as her form turned into that of a lioness. I Isobu, accept to be a member of the summoning contract. Isobu said as he placed his paw on the third square, and they watched as his form turned into that of a dragon. I Son Goku, accept to be a member of the summoning contract. Said Son Goku as he placed his hand on the fourth square, and they watched as his form went from monkey to gorilla. I Kakuo, accept to be a member of the summoning contract. Kakuo said as he placed his hand on the fifth square, and they watched as his form turned into that of a panther. I Seiken, accept to be a member of the summoning contract. Seiken said as she placed her hand on the sixth square, and they watched as her form changed into that of a tiger. I Chamei, accept to be a member of the summoning contract. Said Chamei as she placed her paw on the seventh square, and they watched as her form turned into that of a cheetah. I Jayuki, accept to be a member of the summoning contract. Said Jayuki as he placed his paw on the eighth square, and they watched as his form changed into that of a wolf. I Kurama, accept to be a member of the summoning contract. Said Kurama as he placed his paw on the last square. Thanks now time to train you guys. Naruto said as he started to explain what he will be teaching them. Then flashback. He was brought out of his thought when a knock came at his door. Is that Jiraiya? Wondered Naruto as he stood up. 
The door knocked again and Naruto grunted, all right I'm coming. As he peeped through the hole and saw them. He opened the door and sighed, I didn't expect you back so early Naruto stopped as he saw that it wasn't Jiraiya. Inspecting them he saw two people wearing black cloaks with red clouds. He saw a shorter man with red eyes and a bigger man with a shark face and a massive sword. Come with us Naruto-kun, Itachi said in an emotionless voice. Meanwhile intense Akugai. The blonde woman tapped her foot impatiently on the ground as her companion looked at the castle, come on, Shizune let's go. Ah, Tenzaku Castle has such a fabulous view even from the ground huh, Lady Tsunade. Shizune said. Tsunade glanced at the castle and said hastily, don't waste any more time, we must get out of here as soon as possible, Shizune. Can't we stay a bit longer? Don't you see all this beautiful scenery and it's for free? Said the black-haired woman in protest. Just then the castle suddenly started to crumble, and the smoke cleared to reveal Orochimaru, along with Kabuto beside him. Orochimaru gave Tsunade a smirk, I finally found you Tsunade. The two jumped down from the summoned snake, and Tsunade greeted them, it's been a while, Orochimaru. I have looked all over for you. Replied Orochimaru. Now what do you want from me this time? I know you didn't come here to talk about the past. Tsunade said. Straight to the point as always still, eh? Very well, I have a small favor to ask of you, Tsunade. Orochimaru said. His hand looks like he decided to mess with Kashina's ghost and paid the price. Tsunade thought. Tsunade-sama, you should know by now what is wrong with Orochimaru-sama if it is you. We need your expertise, Tsunade-sama. Said Kabuto. Tsunade made a hand to shoo them away, why should I help the snake freak find another medical specialist like that other guy that I hear usually stitches you up, I don't do freelance work and I'm on vacation. By the way who the hell are you? I am Kabuto and I am afraid that we can't do that. You are one of the Sanin and the most powerful of them all in terms of physical strength. Said Kabuto. What do you want? Said, Tsunade. I want you to join me, Tsunade. So together, we can destroy the leaf village. Said, Orochimaru. Why do I want to do that when my last precious person is there? Tsunade glared at him thinking about Naruto. Whoever he or she is, is not your real family, we both you lost your real family because of Konoha. Me, I lost the power to gain immortality because of that fool of a sensei. You lost two of your most beloved because of Konoha's actions. He those were certainly horrible ways to die. Orochimaru smirked. Tsunade-sama don't listen to him Shizune yelled. Calm down Shizune humph, you haven't changed a bit, Orochimaru. You know who I am and you know that mentioning those two around me are taboo, remember? Don't kid with me. She lost her fake smile and pounded the wall behind her, making a huge crater as she said, I'll kill you you bastard. Tsunade said. What monster strength? Kabuto thought. We didn't come here to fight, only to negotiate. Kabuto said. I already said it once and I don't want anything to do with you. Now get out of my sight. Tsunade looked at him angrily. It is not like it is a one-way bargain let's make a deal. Kabuto tried to reason. I don't make deal with criminals you five seconds to leave or I will kill you. 543 Tsunade said. Please calm down our offer is not probably is that bad said Kabuto. Do one Tsunade continued getting ready to fight. Orochimaru chose at that time to speak, I can bring back your brother and your lover back to life with the kinjutsu that I have developed. Tsunade's eyes widened but then went back to normal when she remembered. I'll get so strong you won't ever have to feel the pain of lose again Tsunade-chan, that's my promise of a lifetime dat deo. Naruto-kun she thought with a small smile. Zero she said as she attacked both of them, but they dodged her fist which left a crater where her fist hit. Don't you want to meet them again, Tsunade? Orochimaru asked surprise. I said no. Tsunade said, as she punched the ground and the split into forcing Orochimaru to dodge again. Don't be a fool. Orochimaru said. I rather be a fool than a traitor. Tsunade said. Fine I leave for now, but I will be back again in seven days, and you will come with me whether you want to or not, the snake Sanin replied, as they both vanish. Let's go Shizune Tsunade said. With Naruto. Enlighten me as to why I would walk off with two S-ranked Rodenin, such as Kisum Hashigik, former shinobi of Kurigakur and one of the former seven swordsmen of the mist, and what I can assume is his partner Itachi Uchiha, former shinobi of Kanahagakur and an ex-Anbu captain. Naruto said calmly while still looking at the two uninvited guests. Looks like somebody did their homework, no Itachi. Kisum joked while his hand was twitched to reach for the sword on his back. It's called reading a bingo book you freak, and the fact that he was my mother's student of course I know who he is, Naruto replied calmly as he narrowed his eyes at Itachi, who breath hitched when he heard that while Kisum become bristled at his offhanded comment about his appearance. Easy Kisum Naruto-kun I implore that it would be wise if you came with us right now. 
Itachi said as he held a hand in front of Kisum before turning his attention back on Naruto who was pensive for the moment. Hein, give me a moment. Naruto said as he closed the door slowly. It was only their experience as shinobi that allowed Itachi and Kisum to jump out of the way as the door came flying at them as Naruto walked out into the large hallway. You're both fools if you think I'm going anywhere with you. Naruto said as he cracked his knuckles and Tensa Masamujetsu appeared in his hand. Ah hey, so he thinks he's got with a sword okay. Itachi let me take him. Kisum asked as he stepped forward while pulling his bandage-covered sword from his back. Very well but be quick about it, we already wasted enough time with the other jonin. Quickly incapacitate Naruto so we can go. Itachi said as he stepped back to allow his partner room to work. I can't see him with my Sharingan, how's that possible? He thought as a clash of steel ring through the large hallway when he looked back he saw something he would forever remember. Naruto was holding Tensa Masamujetsu in front of him, holding back a struggling Kisum back from completing a downward slash at him with just one hand. Naruto sighed before pushing Kisum back making the shark man skid a few feet away from him, after this Naruto appeared behind Kisum. The man went wide-eyed, fast. He twirled around in time to block a slash at his back, but the ground beneath him shattered into a crater. This got a shocked looks from Itachi, and he wondered how strong that attack was. What the hell is going on? Kisum thought before he let down his guard and jumped back in time. He looked at Naruto before charging at him at his top speeds, this left after images in the hallway. Naruto saw his increased in speed and raised Tensa Masamujetsu in time to parry a slash from Kisum before he jumped into the air, dodging a decapitating slice from behind. He narrowed his eyes a little seeing no movement from him before spinning around, knocking away Kisum's attempted slash upon his back. Naruto then took that chance to bring down Tensa Masamujetsu, hammering it down on Kisum Samahata, making the man plummet to the ground. After this Naruto went headfirst before landing on the ground creating yet another crater. He saw and looked at Kisum's prone form before it poofed into smoke, Kisum appeared behind him midway into attack. That's when Naruto appeared behind Kisum making the man go wide-eyed, he's faster. That's when he felt something going down his left arm he looked down to see a red long gash, and in that second blood spurted out. He widened his eyes like Itachi's of how he just did that. Ah. He grunted before he was on the receiving end of the kick knocking him into a wall, he grunted once more and looked up to see Naruto's shoe coming to his face as he shunched into Itachi in time as Naruto's kick put a hole in the wall. Both warriors returned to battle with the intent of hacking each other to pieces, but soon Kisum found himself receiving more cuts on his body than he ever did and Itachi was about to step in and aid his partner two things occurred. First was the arrival of Jureya on the back of a toad named Gama, with the woman from earlier slung over his shoulder unconscious, when Itachi inquired how Jureya found out about the gain Jutsu used on her, the Sanin replied that he saw through their ruse, as women never expressed such an open interest in him like that. The second occurrence was the arrival of Itachi's younger brother Sasuke, who claimed he was here to finally avenge their clan by killing Itachi. Like that would ever happen idiot. Naruto snorted to himself about Sasuke as he and Kisum halted in their match to watch the two Ichiha brothers duke it out. Two Sharingans flared to life, one fully mature and one not as Sasuke powered up his Shidori and ran at his brother at a turtle's pace, all the while screaming at the top of his lungs. Itachi who had turned around to face his little brother, smacked away the jutsu as if it was nothing to him which it was, and the lightning attack ended up exploding in the wall near an empty suite. When the dust cleared it could be seen that Itachi had a firm grip on Sasuke's wrist which he snapped instantly, and it caused the younger Ichiha to howl in pain, before being punched down the hall to hit the wall, before sliding to the ground in a slump. Brittle, oh well the run should have known better. Now then where were we? Kisum said as he lunged at Naruto who once again was fighting the ex Kirinin, as they continued their dance of blades with Kisum having a hard time. Ureya was at a loss at what he should do as he sat on the sidelines, he was watching as his estranged godson not only held his own against one of the infamous seven swordsmen, but was pushing the larger man back with ease. Then there was Itachi who was beating the crap out of Sasuke with minimal effort on his end. Man what in the hell has Kakashi been teaching this kid or lack thereof, cause he's getting his fast handed to him by Itachi. Jiraiya muttered as he watched Itachi pick Sasuke up from a slump after he viciously hit the young Ichiha in the gut with a simple punch. Itachi slammed Sasuke against the wall and began to berate his little brother for being weak before activating his Manjekyo Sharingan and then using his Tsukiyomi for the second time today, with Kakashi being the first. Itachi then forced his brother to relive the systematic slaughter of their clansmen all over again, which caused Sasuke to let out blood-curdling screams at the event. This action prompted Jiraiya into action as he put the woman on his shoulders propped up against the wall, before he began blurring through hand sings before kneeling down and slapping both palms against the ground. Summoning. Toad mouth trap Jiraiya shouted. 
A large plume of smoke emanated from where Jurea's hands were before large amounts of red fleshy substance began to cover the walls, floor, and ceiling of the floor they were all on. This maneuver did not go unnoticed by Kisum and Itachi who glanced as the jutsu took effect. I gotta say kid, you've managed to last against so far, but it's time to end this scuffle of ours. Kisum said as he praised Naruto for standing equal to him during this fun time they were having. Scuffle? Please I'm whopping your ass. Naruto said as Kisum growled, but I agree let's end this, but I regret to inform you this won't end the way you envision. Naruto replied as he angled the tip of Tensuma Samyujetsu towards Kisum's head. Before the shark-themed man could think as to what Naruto meant, Kisum's entire face became a bloody mess, as Naruto fired a 20 successful punches so fast that it looked like one was fired to the ex-Kiri Shinobi's face. As Kisum stumbled backwards and grasped his face from the sudden attack, it was all the time Naruto needed to shunpo forward with his free right hand already in motion. The wet squelching reached everyone's ear as well, all except Sasuke who was unconscious from the mental torture, but he wouldn't count anyway. Jiraiya and Itachi looked to where the sound originated from even Kisum looked down to the sound, and all three men were completely shocked at what they saw, for there on the ground in a growing pool of blood lay Kisum's entire left arm. Looking up further they all could see Naruto in a crouch with his now clawed hand now dripping fresh blood that wasn't his own, finally the shock of it all registered to Kisum who by now had placed Samahada on his back to grip his still bleeding socket, where his arm used to be. Nice Naruto, I'll take it from here now. Jiraiya said as he snapped from his stupor to command the inner toad's stomach to do his bidding in capturing Itachi and Kisum. Kisum time to go, now. Itachi said while expressing urgency as much as he could with such a calm voice as tentacles from the stomach raced forward to attack as Itachi and Kisum unstuck themselves and took off. A huge explosion reached Jiraiya's and Naruto's ears that had them racing up the hallway turning the hallway they saw a hole in the wall with Kisum and Itachi fleeing. You alright? Jiraiya asked Naruto as they approached the hole. Yes, but I'd be more concerned with that hole at the end of the hall. Naruto pointed out as he made his way to the hole with Jiraiya at his side the entire way. When they got there they were both witness to a rare sight, there was black flames burning strong in a ring around the hole, with no signs of stopping anytime soon. I think they were able to break through this just to. Jiraiya mused as he approached the flames and began studying them. So he used a Madarasuha Naruto thought as he watched as Jiraiya sealed the flames using the fire sealing method. Jiraiya and Naruto watched in reflective silence as the chakra used for the ceiling rose from the scroll and encircled the hole while covering the flames, before pulling them inside the scroll at a moderate pace. When the ceiling was complete the kanji for fire appeared in the center of the array, before Jiraiya scooped up the scroll and storing it on his person, before he and his godson turned to the broken Sasuke. As the flesh on the walls let Sasuke down, Jiraiya found himself kicked in the nose. Couple minutes later. Jiraiya was furious as he stuffed some tissue in his nose to stem the nosebleed, thanks to Guy, the eccentric jonin had leaped through the hold made by Itachi and Kisum, while crying dynamic entry as he performed a flying kick. After a few minutes of clearing the air, Guy was apologizing profusely as he hoisted the unconscious form of Sasuke onto his back. Look it's alright, just get Sasuke back to Konoha as fast as you can. He needs to be looked over for mental damage from a powerful game jutsu. Jiraiya instructed to the jonin. Of course Jiraiya Sama but that comment makes me wonder if it was the same game jutsu that struck Kakashi down. Guy pondered. So Kakashi was attacked as well. Jiraiya inquired before Guy recounted the battle that took place in Konoha before he showed up here. I see well that just means we definitely need to succeed in our mission to locate Tsunade. Jiraiya said as he looked at Naruto who nodded. You're going to find Tsunade Haim. Yosh. This is such a great day. I will hurry back to Konoha before the sun sets, if I can't do that I shall run 500 laps around Konoha, if I can't do that then Guy started with a crazed look in his eyes before Jiraiya stopped him. I, Guy, just go. Jiraiya sighed exasperated while pointing to the hole in the wall. Hi, Jiraiya-sama. Guy saluted before running off and jumping out of sight through the hole in the wall. See now that's respect Naruto. You could learn from his example. Jiraiya said as he pointed out Guy's devotion to the shinobi ranking system. Please he's obviously an idiot or on drugs. Let's pay for the damages and just get going, and we're using your wallet. Naruto said as he went to grab their bags while Jiraiya cried at the amount of money he would need to cover the damages. Three days later. It's been three days since Naruto's and Jiraiya's run in with Akatsuki. They used this time to talk about Jiraiya's absence in Naruto's life. Currently they were walking through a small town with Jiraiya, grumbling over the fact that every woman he tried to talk to dropped him the minute they saw Naruto. Oh stop pouting old man. Naruto said. It's not fair. How do you do it? Jiraiya asked. Don't know really Naruto shrugged before getting serious, you sure this is the correct town where Tsunade is? Naruto asked. 
Of course I'm sure, now then what do you say to getting some food? We have been traveling non-stop for the last three days. Jurea suggested as he lead the way to a nearby restaurant that was open this morning. No. I'm not hungry. I'm going to walk around for a while. Naruto said as he walked off. As Naruto walked around he started to remember the first time he met Tsunade. Flashback. A seven-year-old Naruto was walking through a forest toward a town after sneaking out of the village when the Sande Ami went on his political trip to Suna. The old man must be crazy if he thinks I'm going to stay in a village with people that will try to kill me, and all the ninja who actually protects me are out of the village. Naruto thought as he walked into a town. Hinda hungry Naruto muttered as he walked into a dango stand and used the last of his money to buy him something to eat. As he was eating he got the feeling that he was being watched he looked up to see two women sitting together. First was a blonde with her long hair and two ponytails tied with purple hair bands. The woman wore a grey kimono-style blouse with no sleeves, held closed by a broad dark bluish grey opi that matches her pants. Her blouse was closed quite low, revealing her sizable cleavage, she wore open toed sandals with high heels. The blonde's companion was a woman with shoulder-length black hair with bangs and dark eyes, she wore a long bluish black kimono with white trimmings, held closed by a white obi, and open toed sandals with low heels, it gave her an simple but beautiful look. He saw they were both looking at him, while the blonde one had a shocked look on her face. He watched as the blonde got up and walked to his seat and sat down. Hello pretty lady, my name's Naruto Uzumaki what's your... Naruto asked sticking his hand out trying to make a frond, while the blonde woman had tears in her eyes and trembling, she picked him up and sat him in her lap sniffling. Ano lady why are you crying, did I say something wrong? He asked frantically. No. You didn't say anything wrong, it's just that I was told you were dead. She said while Naruto looked shocked. But why would you be told I was dead? He asked while the lady smiled at him and wiped her tears away. My name is Tsunade Senju, and I am your godmother. The now revealed Tsunade said while Naruto looked shocked. Godmother? But the old man said he didn't know who my parents were. Naruto said as Tsunade looked at him curiously. Who? The Hokage Naruto verified. Oh she said. They sat there talking throughout the day getting to know each other, while Tsunade told him about his parents, how they loved him, and how happy they were to be parents. He met Shizune Kato her apprentice. How long can you stay Naruto-kun? Asked Tsunade. About a month before the Hokage goes back to the village. Naruto said. Okay then we'll teach you some things while you are here okay. Tsunade said while Naruto smiled widely. Lady Tsunade hasn't been this happy since she found out she was going to be a godmother Shizune thought watching as Tsunade picked up Naruto and carried him out of the dango stand to their hotel room. Flashback end. Naruto was knocked out of his thoughts as he was on his way back to the bar Jiraiya was in when. Boom. He looked at Jiraiya who was embedded into a wall with a bruise forming on his cheek, he turned into the bar and smiled at who he saw. Tsunade-chan. He called out getting her attention she turned to his, and her eyes widened before she rushed him and pulled him into a hug. I've miss you Naruto-kun. He heard her whisper. And I you him. Naruto whispered back. It was almost midnight everyone was asleep with the exception of Naruto and Tsunade. They were currently sitting on a rooftop with Naruto sitting behind Tsunade with her in between his legs, as he hugged her from behind as she snuggled into his warmth. So why did you and Jiraiya come to find me? Tsunade asked. The fire daimyo wants you to be the fifth Hokage. Naruto responded. I refuse. She said immediately. I knew you would. Naruto said causing Tsunade to turn her head to him, but I still want you to come back. He said as he leaned into the nape of her neck. Why? I'm no one special Naruto-kun, you should just get on with your life. You don't need some washed up old hag like me Tsunade said sadly, while Naruto hugged her tighter. You're special to me. I love you Tsunade-chan. Naruto said while Tsunade's eyes widened and she blushed as Naruto stood up, you're a very special person Tsunade, and I'm going to prove it to you. Naruto said as he took her hand and cut his palm taking some of her chakra, along with his the blood that dropped from his palm, split into two puddles and blood clones formed. Picking Tsunade up bridal style hang on. Naruto said as he jumped to the roof and took off through the skies with Tsunade screaming and clutching onto him for dear life. While flying Tsunade looked at the stars and reached out for the clouds, she looked at the moon, and a familiar feeling went through her. What is this feeling? Why is it that every time I see a full moon I get a massive surge of energy all of a sudden? It feels so primal, Mito Ba said all Yuzumakis get this feeling, does Naruto-kun have it too? Tsunade thought to herself as she looked at Naruto where are we going? She asked. Look ahead. Naruto said Tsunade looked ahead to see a bowl-like palace, causing her eyes to widen it's called the lookout, the first Yuzumaki's trained here. Naruto said. How come no one knew of this place? She asked. 
it's been lost through time, everything of the Yuzumaki clan was transported here when Yuzu was attacked as there is a seal on the land that transported everything of importance up here. Naruto explained. So that's why Iwa and Kumo were so angry when they had nothing to get from Yuzu's ruins. Tsunade thought why are you bringing me here? She asked. This is a part of your heritage, you have the blood of the greatest race ever to exist, as well as the founder of ninjutsu's blood running through your veins. You have the power in you to be the strongest Kanoichi to ever grace the elemental nations. Naruto said as he landed on the platform and set Tsunade down, who looked at him in shock before she looked away. And how am I supposed to do that Naruto-kun when I can't even stand the sight of blood? She asked as he took her chin and turned her face to him as he put his forehead to hers. You are going to train up here and I'm going to give you back your youth. Naruto answered. What? How? She asked Naruto who pulled back. Relax. Naruto said as he channeled his celestial energy into his fangs and bit into Tsunade's neck and pushed the energy into her. As his body started to glow Tsunade felt more energy than she ever felt in her life, her hair stated gaining red highlights, her freest got bigger growing to a J cup. Naruto was surprised at how potent the Saiyan blood in her was before he unlocked it and her bones got stronger as her body turned to that of a 19 year old's. When he was finished Tsunade pulled him into a kiss. Wow. She said after Naruto pulled back before she noticed that her voice sounded younger what did you do to me? She asked. I turned your body back to a 19 year old's. Although I had no idea that your freest would grow that big. Naruto answered as he muttered the last part anyway, now you had no excuses, I'm going to train you in the hyperbolic time chamber for six years, making that six days outside. Naruto explained as he started to explain what the hyperbolic time chamber was before they went to bed. Next day. Hyperbolic time chamber. Naruto was staring out at Tsunade, who was getting control of over her hemophobia faster than he thought she would, they had been in here for about 30 minutes. He had a blood clone keep cutting itself till she stopped shivering, and it looks like she finally got over her fear. That was easy. Naruto said. Yeah I guess it was Tsunade trailed off I thought about what would happen if I got into a fight, or if you and Shizune needed me to heal you guys, and it got easier to overcome my fear of blood. Tsunade said. But now I'm going to teach you about Kai. Naruto said as he sat down in front of her and motioned for her to do the same now Kai is the physical component in chakra, the more you train in it, the more stronger you'll get. To access you Kai I want you to focus and look deep within yourself, ignore the chakra and look for the more free-flowing energy, it's more potent and for us it should be primal as well. When you feel a pull bring it out. Naruto explained as he showed her how it was done as a small red Kai ball appeared in his hand, which entranced Tsunade by its beauty. Tsunade put her hands in front of her and focused as she looked deep inside herself, she went around her chakra, and another source of energy this one was chaotic and potent, but it wasn't free-flowing. Looking even deeper she found a massive source of power it was free-flowing and really potent, when she felt a pull she pulled it out, and when she opened her eyes a forest green kai was between her hands. She looked up to see Naruto smiling at her. Now we'll focus on controlling it. Naruto said as the orb diminished. Four years later, four days later outside chamber. It's been four years for Tsunade and Naruto in the time chamber since then, he's had Tsunade using shadow clones to learn Fuinjutsu, Tujutsu, Ninjutsu, Genjutsu, and Kenjutsu, as well as teaching her about Ryoku. Currently a thousand Tsunade shadow clones were working on sealing with a clone of Naruto watching over them. The original Naruto and Tsunade were currently in the sky sparring. The yellow streak fell from the sky revealed to be Tsunade, although her hair was golden blonde and spiked, while her eyes were teal. She looked up at Naruto who was also in his Super Saiyan form smirking at her. He gives her the bring it gesture, and she smirks before disappearing a burst of speed and reappears behind Naruto, she kicks him in the back sending him flying into the ground, but he manages to stop himself, sensing a spike of chakra Naruto looked up just in time to see a wood dragon heading his way. The wood dragon struck the ground, while Naruto tackled Tsunade from behind, sending them to the ground rolling to a stop Naruto was on top of Tsunade between her legs, they stared into each other's eyes, before Tsunade pulled him into a kiss, before pulling back. Like I said I won't take you till you're ready. Naruto said seeing Tsunade's expression Mito-chan should be here in a couple of minutes. Naruto said helping Tsunade to her feet while she smiled getting to talk to her grandmother again. Since she's been in here she has met each of Naruto's mates, and she was surprised that two of her tree students and her grandmother were his mates. They've been appearing to help her training multiple times. 30 minutes later. Lemon happened. 3 years later, 3 days outside. Real world. Naruto and Tsunade were currently leaving the lookout, they had spent the last 2 years catching Tsunade up with all the sex she missed in her life, and some training here and there. It was currently dark out, as they were flying Tsunade returned to her original form, while Naruto stayed in his 18-year-old form. 
So what are you going to do about Shizune? Naruto asked Tsunade. Well when you gave me my mate mark information rushed through my head, and among the information was a way to make Shizune immortal, till she finds someone to love and gives it up, but it's her choice. Tsunade said making Naruto nod, what are you going to tell Jiraiya about your sudden growth spurt? She asked. You be Naruto said simply causing Tsunade to nod I still don't get why the fire daimyo would want to speak with us, Mido-chan knows, but refuses to say anything about it. Naruto said. We'll see when we get to Konoha. Tsunade said. Yeah let's hurry, you have a meeting with the snake in a couple of hours. Naruto said as he and Tsunade flew to the village they were staying in for the time being. As they flew through the window they saw the blood clones asleep on the bed, dispelling the clones Tsunade, and Naruto got into bed and fell asleep smiling. Next day. Tsunade was with Shizune waiting for her ex-teammate and his boy toy to show up. She had tried to explain things to Shizune, but the girl wouldn't shut up to give her the opportunity to explain. Orochimaru and Kabuto had emerged from the ground a few dozen feet from Tsunade, who was now faking a resigned face, while Shizune was looking at her in disappointment. So, did you make up your mind, Tsunade? Orochimaru inquired. Yes. On only one condition. You get the sacrifices, I don't care who, how, or from where, nor do I want to know. Tsunade sighed. Very well, it's not that much of a request. I'm sure I have some prisoners I don't need somewhere Orochimaru shrugged nonchalantly. Fine then. Let's do this. Tsunade sighed as she and the snake approached each other, while Kabuto stood still and watched her movement suspiciously. Tsunade's arm was glowing with green chakra as she raised it to touch the wound on Orochimaru's arm, where the puppet arm started, only for the snake to jump back when a kunai thrown by Kabuto struck the ground between the two legendary ninja. What is it, Kabuto? Orochimaru asked calmly. That is a medical jutsu covering a wind blade channeled around her palm. I almost didn't notice it. Kabuto replied. So, Tsunade, you have decided to betray me. Orochimaru concluded. Naw, nah, really? Tsunade rolled her eyes as she slashed her hand towards the two. Orochimaru and Kabuto jumped away and avoided the blade, only to gulp when a thin but deep gash formed into the ground. Interesting, I didn't know you could use wind manipulation. Orochimaru narrowed his eyes. Oh, you've seen nothing yet. Tsunade whispered as she appeared before the two and punched them in the gut, blowing them away to the grassy field outside the town. It seems your legendary strength isn't working too well. Kabuto said in amusement. After all, it didn't even bruise us. He finished while she raised an eyebrow. Kabuto, subdue her. I'll keep an eye on her companion in case she tries anything. Orochimaru ordered. Oh, no need. I tried to explain the situation to her, but she wouldn't listen, and now I'm ordering her to not interfere. Tsunade said looking over her shoulder at Shizune, who was looking at her in shock before she shunpoed before Kabuto and aiming to crush his ribsage in one blow. Unfortunately, she charged her chakra a moment too long, and that was enough for Kabuto to jump away. The resulting crater was of considerable size. Lady Tsunade, it would seem you're getting slow in your old age. Kabuto smirked. Too bad for you, you were quite a fighter in your prime. A pity. He finished taunting as he activated his chakra scalpel. He then found himself flying away with two broken ribs, courtesy of Tsunade, who had appeared besides him during his rant. I don't have time for weak rookies. Tsunade declared as she approached Orochimaru who had bitten his finger until it bleed. Hmm, it seems you got over your hemophobia. Orochimaru mused as he watched Tsunade approach as he held his hand up for her to see the blood. No matter. He added before doing a few hand signs using the time limit he had till the pain in his arm will restart and slam palm onto the ground. In a puff of smoke Orochimaru was standing on top of the two-headed snake he had summoned. You think a grass worm like that can hurt me? I'm insulted. Tsunade frowned as the head Orochimaru wasn't on lunged at her. Without hesitation she backhanded it before looking at Orochimaru and realizing it had been a diversion. Wind release. Wind bullet. Orochimaru called out as he spat a highly pressurized massive chakra right at her. She had gotten to jumpy, Tsunade realized as the jutsu was about to hit her. She had shown too much too early and made the snake too paranoid to allow her to approach him so easily. As she jumped away and saw the blast expand her thoughts were let's have fun. She was completely enveloped by the blast and Orochimaru blinked sheepishly at the power he had unleashed on the person he hoped to heal him. There goes that idea. I must acquire the Sharingan earlier than expected it seems. Orochimaru mused as the dust began to settle. He was a little surprised that a figure was still standing in there, but he remembered about the seal on Tsunade's forehead. Still, she could have a limb missing. She can't regrow that. He muttered as he prepared to fight an angry Tsunade, who was running low on chakra. Instead, he saw her standing there looking bored, her clothes dirty but otherwise unharmed, while the seal on her forehead remained. Orochimaru-sama. 
Kabuto announced his presence he landed beside the snake Sanon. Interesting. Orochimaru narrowed his eyes before forming a ram hand sign. Kai. But nothing changed. So it wasn't Gain Jutsu, she really is unharmed. Kabuto observed. Yes, though I doubted she was using any Gain Jutsu anyway. You see, the one she's using to look young makes her unable to cast any other Gain Jutsu worth using. And it was never her specialty anyway. Orochimaru mused. I thought you'd be done by now Tsunade chan. A voice was heard, making Orochimaru's and Kabuto's head look to the left. Yeah, well, shit happens. Tsunade grinned at her mate who had appeared along with Yureya. How's the barrier? She asked. What barrier? Orochimaru inquired before Naruto could answer. Um, I think that one. Kabuto said as he pointed at the sky. Glancing upwards, the eyes of the snake San and widened. It was enormous. A humongous cage with various symbols he didn't understand was projected above them, having a diameter of nearly two miles. And as he glanced downwards from the edge of it, he noticed that the barrier they were in was in the shape of a cylinder. How do you like it, Orochimaru? Jiraiya smirked. The kid's a natural. Why thank you Jiraiya. Naruto said. You damn brat. Orochimaru roared. I'll make you pay. Enough chatter. Jiraiya said before he quickly made some hand signs earth release. Swamp of the underworld. He called out and a swamp formed under the snake summon, quickly dragging it in its depths. TSK. Orochimaru said in annoyance as he jumped away with Kabuto while drawing some blood before slamming his hands to the ground as he landed, Tsunade and Jiraiya doing the same as they saw their actions. Summoning Jutsu. All three Sanin called out and a few moments later Gamabunta, Manda and Katsai were face to face, their respective summoners on their heads. Orochimaru. Why have you summoned me? Manda demanded. It's an honor to fight besides you once again, late Tsunade. Katsai said. Ah, it's a reunion. Gamabunta chuckled. It's nice to be summoned to fight again. Speak, Orochimaru. Why did you bring me here? You know the price of my services. The snake boss demanded. That town over there has double the tribute. Kill them all and they're all yours. And make the blonde brat suffer. Orochimaru hissed before grinning evilly. You're out of your league, brat. Really? Naruto asked as he started going through hand signs before he drew blood and slammed his hand on the ground. Summoning Jutsu. A red flash appeared making everyone look away or cover their eyes. When they look upwards again, shock, surprise and fear were what they felt. Above them was a beast that they thought was trapped in a seal to never breath fresh air again, above them was Hikyubi no Kitsune, but he was bigger than he was the last time he was seen. What in Tuck? How's he able to summon the QB? Kabuto yelled in horror as he stared upwards. I don't know, but we have to get the hell out of here. Orochimaru hissed. So Orochimaru am I in your league now? Naruto asked innocently. Naruto, why have you summoned me? Kurama questioned as he glanced around before looking down and spotting the three summons. Ah, I see. Just the snake and the ones on its head. The others are on our side. Naruto instructed. Just that garden worm? Kurama questioned. Then what did you summon me for, those two are more than enough to take it down. Hey, I thought you could use some fresh air, but if you don't want it, I can summon Jayuki then. Naruto said. No. I got it, sheesh I mean I do like to see the outside world every once in a while. Kurama said as Yaki, unnoticeable from below, began to gather in his mouth. Yotsu chan, perv. Stand back a bit. Naruto told those bellow. The frog and slug were at the edge of the barrier so fast that all Naruto could do was blink owlishly for a moment. Manda was looking at QB above his with wide eyes as QB's mouth began to glow. Orochimaru, how the hell did you anger this man to have something like the QB? The snake boss trembled as he saw Kami's chosen one, who was introduced to every summoning contract a little of a month ago. You know this kid. Orochimaru paused from staring in abject horror at the tailed beast. He is K. Manda. Naruto interrupted Manda turned to him, don't you dare tell this foolish mortal about what I am. Naruto hissed as he glared. Yes, Naruto-sama. But now I want you to remove every name off the snake contract, with the sole exception of Anko Midarashi, if not then there will need to be a new snake summon boss. Naruto threatened Manda who nodded as he saw the glow in Kurama's mouth seem to intensify. I accept. Manda hissed eagerly. Don't you dare. Orochimaru yelled before he and Kabuto were thrown off. Shut up you idiot. I'm not committing suicide for you. Manda hissed angrily before leaving Orochimaru's side and heading for Naruto and Kurama who was waiting. Tsunade, he's all yours. Naruto smirked as the blonde dashed by him and socked the pale Sanin in the jaw, sending him flying until he hit the barrier and slid down. Kabuto wasn't any luckier as Jiraiya began pounding him as well. Meanwhile, Naruto looked at Manda and placed a huge scroll on his back. You're free to go. This scroll has food for you and you kin. 
Also, it would be appreciated if you removed Orochimaru's snakes from it right away. Naruto said. It shall be done. Manda bowed before leaving in a puff of smoke. Naruto then thanked Kurama, who was said he didn't get to fight away, Naruto then headed for Tsunade, who was still pounding Orochimaru. Something's wrong. Naruto frowned it's too easy. Any last word snake? Tsunade growled as she was about to crush his skull, Kabuto had long since died. Yes. Orochimaru spat some blood. When I'm healed I will crush Konoha. You still think you can escape? Jiraiya laughed. You took too many hits to the head. Why should I escape when I'm not even here? Orochimaru grinned evilly as he raised his hand to perform a hand sign. Naruto however shunpoed his side and grabbed his arm before slapping a tag to his forehead that glowed red before disappearing. I should have known. Naruto growled. You are a coward, after all. What is it, Naruto? Tsunade frowned. That's not really Orochimaru. Naruto explained as the snake was forming the same hand sign again and again without any result. It's a human sacrifice that, through a technique, it looks like him and has all his abilities besides some bloodlines and only a portion of his chakra. He learned it during his time in Akatsuki. And, true enough, Kabuto was revealed to be some other silver-haired teenager. What did you do? Orochimaru demanded. I sealed you in here until the sacrifice dies, you can no longer end the technique yourself. Naruto smirked. And it's a matter of time Orochimaru deducted. Yes. Naruto nodded. As he placed his glowing hands on the snake's vitals and partially healed him. Tsunade, hit him where it hurts, but it's not fatal. We aren't in any hurry. Gladly. Tsunade smirked as she tore Orochimaru's limbs and began to dissect him, while Naruto healed him just enough for him to live. She removed his organs one by one and crushed them before his horrified eyes until only the vitals remained. At that point she took his still beating heart out of his chest and crushed the heart and revealing it to have been an Odonin. Well, let's clean up and head home. Tsunade said with a million dollar smile as she got up, grabbed Naruto, and headed towards the town, the barrier having disappeared when Orochimaru's technique ended. The end. So how was this part, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this part with your friends and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye bye.